Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Monday, March 9th, 2015. And in this video, I want to do take a look at gold, talk a little bit about the recent price action, and uh, my thoughts on both the near-term and longer-term uh, look uh, forecast uh, for gold. So let's take a look at the daily chart of gold, GLD actually, the ETF, that's what we're looking at here. And um, as we all know, Friday, those of you that trade gold were in the recent GDX trade. Uh, you know, Friday was a horrible day. We had a big gap down below both this ascending broadening wedge pattern defined by the white lines here that I had been watching. Uh, we had taken a long position at the bottom of that pattern uh, with a, you know, stop defined below. The stop was cleared out yesterday on GDX, or I'm sorry, on Friday. So far today, we're looking at um, what may turn out to be an inside day. Prices have been trading uh, well within inside of that uh, Friday's big, big red candlestick. So an inside day is a potential reversal pattern if, uh, when it comes following a trend. We'll just have to see how gold trades uh, in the next few sessions. As I mentioned, I would not be at all surprised uh, if to see this prove to be a fake out move. Gold has just been uh, notoriously plagued with fake outs in both directions. You know, I talked a lot about the uh, bear trap. Um, this was one of my scenarios when we were going, heading down towards those, uh, that triple bottom support, the triple bottom defined by the 2013, mid 2013 and late 2013, yeah, late 2013, early 2014 bottom, as well as the October 2014 bottom. That is the 1450 level on GLD, which equates to the the 1180 uh, level on spot gold prices. I'll get to the spot gold chart in a minute. So that was a, a big level. Uh, uh, we had a what proved to be a fake out move. Um, you know, gap, big gap, almost a comparable. If you look at, zoom in here a little bit, and you can see where that candlestick went, uh, was right here, the red candlestick, right there at the um, the first candlestick at the beginning of the top of the uh, ascending broadening wedge pattern. Uh, that gap was very comparable to what we saw yesterday. Um, we also had, uh, at that point, looks like an inside day, followed by another huge gap down. I mean, this is just bear fodder. As I told you, this was, you know, back at the time, once we, even before we broke below there, I said if we did, that would become my preferred scenario. I wouldn't be surprised to see a fake out move. And we got that, and boy, did that just roast the, um, you know, the bears or anybody that shorted gold at that point. I mean, by all metrics, that is bearish price action. The gap down below a well-watched support level, um, a little consolidation, then another big gap below on the third day, which proved to be the lows in gold before this strong rally was launched. Anyways, that's that's all history. You know what happened there. You can see it on the chart. And again, we have this other. Uh, drop below that 1450 area, um, as well as the ascending broadening wedge pattern. So as I mentioned on Friday, uh, there's really no other way to spin that but bearish. So that I'm not going to try to do. The near-term bearish action that took us out of the GDX position, and right now, um, you know, a long would be a, a counter trend, highly speculative trade. My thoughts are this, that even if we do see the reversal, which I, I favor, at some point I favor prices moving back up, um, I'll just wait and, and watch it. We're at 112.09 right now as, as the GLD trades, and that level is only 114.50. So we're talking what, just over a little over two points, about 2% overhead. No reason to jump the gun right now and take a long position under right underneath support. What I'd like to see is uh, the GLD move solidly back above the 14.50 level, which if and when it does, it'll also have moved up above this two-year downtrend line. I'll zoom out. Let's go all the way back. This is a four-year chart. So we can see that downtrend line. The yellow downtrend line began back on October, uh, back in October 2012. And, you know, there's, uh, I talk about fake outs. Not only have the fake outs roasted the shorts, but the longs as well. I'm sure there were a lot of longs watching that uh, uh, downtrend line, as I was, and, you know, we came back up. And so this most recent long entry was both on a back test of that line as well as prices moving down to the bottom of this ascending broadening wedge pattern and boom prices have fallen through so again it's the nature of the beast gold has just been plagued with false whipsaws you could call them false breakouts fake outs in either direction 
And, uh, you know, the, the chart, the price action or my technical read on it, at least the way I see the charts, is starting to get a little more difficult because when I have a, a solid support and resistance level like this, like that 114.50 area, that's fine to have seen it you know, fall through once and see the fake out and regain that level. But ideally, you want to see prices regain it. Now that we've had another breakdown, and I should clarify there was another a breakdown shortly after we regained that level, prices went below there for a few days, not long, and then moved higher. But now we're back below that again. So what happens is this line now becomes less significant, in my opinion. Um, I, I think there's still a lot of traders that watch that 1450, 1180 in, in spot gold. Um, but the more a support or resistance level or a trend line is traded through, the less significant it becomes is support and resistance. So with that being said, let's get away from that. Um, just from a pure, if we, we, you know, we turn all these lines off and everything else, uh, we can see that gold is still yet to take out those lows put in back in uh, November. Um, so from a pure technical perspective, we have a series of, not the cleanest, but somewhat of an uptrend because almost a series of higher highs, as we see here, and higher lows. Boom, boom, boom. However, we did take out, uh, by the very slightest margin, we took out these uh, the previous reaction low back in January 2nd. Um, really clung to it. I mean, by, again, by pennies. So we're really back there. It just sort of, as I said, muddies up the near-term technical picture. You know, we don't have a now. We no longer have a clear series of higher lows in in gold, at least not in the GLD. So, again, just something that I'm stepping away from right now. Um, but I'll talk on the longer-term outlook in a minute. Let's go ahead and throw those uh, those annotations back on the chart here. I've mentioned this in the past. Uh, the uh, very simple but effective. Um, buy signals, if you will, on gold using the RSI. Uh, I often say that any one indicator should never be a buy alone, uh, you know, should never be relied upon as a buy alone, I'm sorry, a standalone, <laughs> excuse me, buy and sell signal. And in this case, uh, we've had some pretty good results. All these dips, I don't have an arrow here, I could add a white arrow right here, and it would match up to this reaction low. So what I'm pointing at here are these rallies, this one, you know, in gold, that was about an eight and a half percent rally. You can see that in the lower left hand side. I'm sorry, the lower uh, towards the bottom of that box in green plus eight point five eight. So that's an eight and a half percent rally. Um, this one was considerably higher. So my point is these white arrows plus the one I should have added right here at the beginning of this positive divergence uh, that marks each time the RSI cross below 30. The green line is 30 level. Um, now let me be clear, I put a white arrow right here. We actually cross below 30 back here, if you look at the crosshairs. And so again, as I said a minute ago, these are not timing indicators. They they just do put you on alert. Um, and I'll show it on a spot gold chart that the over overbought readings are just as effective on, on getting out, helping you time when to get out or at least not add to your positions. But my point here is, this is not, in my opinion, a good time to be shorting gold because now we have crossed below that level. And just to go back here, what I was trying to point out is, see, this got us in a few days. Each of these, this is a daily chart, so these are daily candlesticks. And that looks to be about, I'm just eyeballing it, maybe a week and a half, um, you know, eight or so candlesticks. So that oversold reading came a little early. The bottom was right here. But once we cross back above that level, boom, there's a nice little rally in gold. Again, next oversold reading, you get the point. So right now, oversold, history shows us that is not time to be uh, shorting or establishing a, a short position in gold if you don't already have it. Uh, it may be a buy signal, it may prove to be, but I don't have enough additional or supporting evidence to justify a long position here. Uh, if and when, as I said, we see this, 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 this recent uh, bearish action reversed, Let's see that gap closed, Friday's big gap. That would be uh, step number one. Now a, a bounce back to the top of the gap, that's natural. Gaps are usually, or very often, backfilled. So just a, a backfill of that gap alone is only going to bring us right up to about, maybe slightly above that trend line, and the yellow downtrend line. And keep in mind, that downtrend line has been traded through recently, which again, 
reduces the validity, if you will, of that trend line. So uh, I'm just looking at pure price action, looking at these candlesticks here. We have resistance around somewhat around a little bit about 116.91. Here's a big gap here. Um, you know, I'd like to see us move up to here and and maybe take out that top of that gap and then things would be looking really good. And given that's, you know, several, you know, five, six, seven percentage points higher in, in gold. Um, but to help strengthen a case to to add to a position or, or initiate a new long position, that's probably what we're going to need to see. And if anything changes, again, I will. I'm not going to go into the 60-minute charts right now, but I will take a look at the weekly charts. All right. Uh, let's take a look at one other chart here. Okay, sticking with the daily time frame, this is uh, spot gold prices. Uh, again, this is an end of day chart, so these this chart has not been is not being updated as that GLD chart that I just talked about was. I'm doing this video about noon Eastern time on uh, Monday here. Uh, but what we've looked at, and, and again, this has been on this chart for a long time, and I, this annotation right here, ideally you want to be buying slash selling gold immediately following these oversold and overbought readings on the RSI. And again, for those of you not familiar with the RSI, um, any any move uh, 70 or higher, uh, especially across above the 70 level, is considered overbought. That's what I have uh, circled or squared in here with the red and any move down below the 30 level is considered oversold and um, you can this we have a live link to this chart on the site you can take a look at this chart uh, just put a horizontal line you'll see that every single one of these oversold readings produced at least a tradable bounce by tradable bounce I'm talking more than just a percent or two you know typically five percent or more uh, likewise, these oversold readings, again, not exact timing indicators, but if you look at uh, just follow where prices were after gold reached these oversold levels, and typically within just days, very significant corrections begin. Uh, so again, go ahead, look at the chart. That was pointed out here recently, back when gold ran into this downtrend line, and that's when I closed out my last batch of uh, gold mining stock trades. and precious metal positions was up here. Um, I was expecting a pullback. I did a video at the time uh, stating that if uh, gold prices were to pull all the way back to back test this neckline, that I would that would raise concerns. I'd have a lot of concerns. And I had mentioned that because what we had here, and I'm referring to this inverse head and shoulders pattern right here with the left shoulder head, right shoulder, that's a bullish um, uh, reversal pattern. And what I had stated is prices at, prices at this point when we came up here and we reached that oversold level, although I was expecting a pullback, I had said that if we came all the way back to that neckline, that would be the first warning sign. I wouldn't want to see that that, that, that too steep of a retracement. Typically, you don't see a inverse head and shoulders pattern come back, get that far away from the neckline is what I'm trying to say. We almost reached my, my you know, objective, you know, at least my near-term swing target, a T1, but then we came back down, we came back and back-tested this black downtrend line, fell through that, and now, boom, we've came through the 1180, that green line, red line, that's the uh, key 1180 support resistance line, also defined by that triple bottom. So, boom, 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 just nothing but bearish price action, bearish technicals, and about the only one of the few positives I see right now, again, is as it just, I just mentioned on the GLD chart, we have crossed below the 30 level on the RSI. We're at 26.64 is where it closed. Again, this is Friday's close. And, uh, you know, gold's trading about flat right now, slightly up. But uh, either way, so there is a potential buy signal or at the very least be on the lookout for a reversal soon. Okay, so I had to pause it there and picking back up here, sort of can't remember exactly where I left off, but I'm flipping over now just back to a daily chart of gold and uh, similar to the first one we looked at, uh, this one pretty much shows the same thing, the downtrend line, the ascending broadening wedge pattern. Uh, 
This is on the live chart links on the site. If you go to the live chart links page, this is the chart of the daily chart of GLD that'll come up. And what I added here last week was this dotted line. You know, we have several reaction highs right here. I'm sorry, reaction lows. One, two, and now three. So this is a minor support level um, where we're at on the GLD. And currently we're trading, as you can see, about 112.10. I don't know if you can make that out. So this is a live chart right here. Um, so point to consider that gold may hold support here. And remember, we're still, we have not taken out these lows. That is, that would be very bearish to see the November lows taken out. Until then, uh, we're sort of in no man's land, if you will, if you want to call it. Okay, so that was, you know, if we're covering the good, the bad, the ugly here, Friday's action was definitely the ugly in gold. Um, and, you know, it's hard. It, it definitely put a damper on, uh, certainly on the near-term case. It makes the intermediate outlook for gold a little opaque uh, or blurry, in my opinion. And now longer term, I remain bullish on gold. I think uh, it's setting up. Uh, there's still a lot of bullish potential in gold. We need to see a few things happen, but I'll go over um, both the positives and negatives on the long term. So what we're looking at here is a 10-year uh, weekly time frame on gold. And as you can see, prices have been moving down here within this these these yellow trend lines, which is sort of a bullish falling wedge pattern, more of a, what I would refer to as a contracting channel. Either way, the essence of the pattern is the same. We clearly have gold moving down within this channel or this trading range. This bottom line is support. So from a Again, from a if you want to take uh, the glass half full approach to gold, you say, well, it looks like we're approaching a nice support level that has produced these react these bounces before, and ideally you want to buy at these support levels, and we're very close. We're not there yet, but we're very close. A little downside left. We could actually take out. I just spoke on the daily chart. If we took out the November. Um, November lows in gold, how that would be a bearish technical event, and it would by all means, but looking at this chart from a longer term perspective, uh, this trend line as it's slightly downward sloping, if prices go on to tag the bottom of it, we're going to just slightly undercut those November lows. So just keep that in mind. Um, my point is, you know, on the site, we had gold as a short from nearly off the highs. It was one of the longest standing short trades on the site. Um, you know, I have no problem. I am anything but a gold or anything bug. You know, I, I, but with that being said, I, you know, have to formulate as a trader, you have to pick a side. Uh, you can step back and there's nothing wrong with that. Like right now, as I said, I have no desire to engage the sector, but um, overall, my longer term bias remains bullish. And that's what I'll be looking at. If and when we undercut those lows, I'll be watching for any signs of a reversal and maybe position long down at that point. Um, but if we look down below, we still have those strong bullish divergences in place on below that uh, falling wedge slash channel pattern uh, on both the PPO and the RSI. So strong divergences. These are Fibonacci clusters. It's really hard to make out on this chart here, but we have um, two separate Fibonacci retracement levels from both this reaction low back in 2008 during the financial meltdown, as well as really the launch or back here. Um, but pretty much a launch of this secular bull market in gold. So um, that's that's one view on the weekly. And here's another view. This is also a weekly chart of gold, uh, spot gold. At this time we were just looking at the GLD. And a mixed bag on this one, actually. We have this, this long-term uptrend line that I have drawn. This one goes all the way back to the 2002 lows. And um, prices broke below that up that uh, uptrend line, which in itself is a un, arguably a bearish technical event. It was a uh, a pretty well defined uptrend line as well. You know, we had multiple reactions here. Really, no touches for a while. For years, uh, we were well above that trend line, and then we did have a tag. Um, we had a nice long trade off both these two recent tags in 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 the last couple of years of that trend line. But we've broken below hit that support level right here and um, came back up to back test the line from below and immediately reverse. So that obviously, you know, just looking at that alone, that that's bearish price action, a breakdown of a primary uptrend line, 
a back test and price is immediately reversing. However, we s sit on this support shelf. Again, we're, as I'm talking about this, you know, those triple bottom lows from the last couple of years and, you know, a little fake out period, but overall, this is a pretty decent support level. It even goes back to here. We have this reaction low, some reaction highs. Uh, so there's gold on support. And again, strong bullish divergences in place. Now, these divergences could be taken out. In other words, the prices break down, break the support level and continue to move lower. If we are in some new, just in a consolidation period of a new secular bear market in gold, that's a possibility. And then these divergences will go away. So, you know, positive divergences, uh, bullish falling wedges, those are just potential, you know, patterns. Um, more often than not, than not, I do see them play out. But I wanted to point out things can go either either way right now and we're sort of again in in what I call no man's land right now technically speaking so best to just watch you know for now from the sidelines okay just to wrap up on gold this is the last chart this is another weekly chart that I have um, you know there's a lot of different patterns I try to look at everything that I can on gold and sometimes you don't want to fit it all onto just one chart because uh, it'll look crazy with trend lines everywhere and you can't make heads or tails of it so on this one I show that same you know uptrend line off the you know 2000 actually 2001 lows uh, yeah 2001 2002 lows there's the big secular bull market and a break of that trend line now I also have this a dashed black trend line that starts here back in about uh, late 2005 and we have a couple reactions one two three and lately we've been riding on that trend line so there is uh, an alternative I'll call it a secondary uptrend line support and we're still on that support so so far so good if you look at it from that point of view uh, that we're just we're on support right now on a trend line and prices can move up the blue lines are again that uh, bullish falling wedge pattern slash contracting channel uh, with the strong divergences in place. So this again guides my overall bias. I see more bullish, considerably more bullish potential developments here in gold and, and signs that gold is due for an imminent reversal or breakout. Now when I say imminent and we're talking a weekly time frame, you know, we're, this chart spans what 20 years we're looking at. So imminent on a weekly chart, weekly time frame, can mean weeks or months, um, but I would think in some time in 2015, certainly that this will resolve one way or the other. We're going to have this this trading range that we've had over the last couple of years in gold. It'll either prices will fall out or break to the upside and and start a, a new uh, cyclical bull market. And that that remains my uh, primary um, thesis right now. Okay, and to wrap this video up, I said I'd touch on the gold stocks real quick. You know, the gold stocks are typically my preferred trading proxy. You know, if you get the call on gold right, uh, the miners are almost always going to follow gold. There are some short-term disconnects, but for the most part, gold up equals miners up. And as miners are essentially a leveraged play on gold, you're going to have a lot more bang for your buck trading the uh, miners, especially if you can sniff out the... You know, the most bullish patterns when going long or the most bearish patterns when going short and trade the individual miners. Um, but, of course, for simplicity, we have the GDX, uh, the gold miners ETF, and we have uh, the leveraged ETFs like Dust and Nugget. So uh, this is the, you know, I've talked on this one in, in detail. And just to, for those of you new to the site, you know, you go back and, and look. This was a, a broadening wedge pattern that I was pointing out all the way back in 2011, 2012. And we had a swing short entry here on the partial rise. Uh, talked on partial rises just recently with the uh, QQQ short on the site. Um, and that was a nice short trade. Um, you know, I'm not going to say I rode it all the way down to the bottom. That I didn't do. But I you know, milked out a lot of this on the short side as a swing short trade. And, um, you know, was bearish when it was time to be bearish in gold. And even along the way, you know, there's... Uh, been plenty of long and short trades in in the gold mining stocks um, but more most importantly let's talk about the big picture here this is a weekly chart we're looking at 10 years uh, time span bullish divergences in place here's a large descending broadening wedge pattern remember we had an ascending broadening wedge pattern in gold this is a descending broadening wedge pattern and we came up and you know 
uh, we had a nice long entry I uh, posted here on the bottom of that pattern that that was an objective long area and we had you know percentage wise there's some big gains you know the GDX alone went up what was that it looks like 30 to the top 37 percent um, and a lot of the individual gold and silver miners went up many many times that um, so or at least more than 37 percent not many times Anyways, we we got up there, and I had uh, not so long ago put this horizontal resistance level here. You know, we retraced more than halfway up into the pattern, and since then prices have come down. However, looking at this, looking at volume patterns, looking at the divergences, I don't expect a downside resolution, nor do I even expect the bottom of this pattern to be visited again. Although anything's possible, you can almost draw an uptrend line right here. I can throw that in there real quick something to watch you know an uptrend line takes at least three points to have it validated any two points is random when when drawing trend lines trying to connect any two points so it's really the third tag of a trend line so let's watch this now we have one two three weekly candlesticks let's see if gdx finds support here uh let's zoom down real quick look at a daily chart you know i made a case that yeah you know, a few months back I was more bullish on the mining sector, at least I made a very bullish case for the mining sector, uh, despite where gold was, and that case was based on both technicals and fundamentals, with the fundamental case being, you know, looking at where the gold mining stocks are now compared to where they were back in 2008 when gold was, you know, uh, trading where it was, as well as oil prices. So uh, you know, oil and energy is a big, big cost to the miners trying to extract uh, the metals out of the ground, so... Uh, low these low oil prices should really be a boom and you can see this the GDX is actually held up better uh, than gold you know relatively speaking so we're our, we have a clear uptrend line here a series of lower lows and so far higher highs so it would be really nice this is that da that uptrend line that I was talking about here it'd be nice to see gold or GDX find support here and go on and make its way up to take out that the, that uh, reaction high back in late January here around the $23 level. Um, that would then put in a new higher high, especially if we can keep these, this make a lower low here, you know, not take out these, what is that, back in uh, December, not, uh, not violate those lows. So that's GDX, and um, we'll take a quick look at some of the bigger components if I put the GDX holdings over here. Let's just go to a weekly time frame and look at the big picture on, I'll just go over the top few components. Uh, what I'm doing, these are sorted by market cap. So here's uh, Gold Corp, about a $17 billion uh, gold mining company. And we have this sort of, uh, this broadening wedge type pattern here. Uh, some divergences in place there on the PPO. Again, we're looking at a weekly chart. And you can't justify really an entry here, but overall I see some bullish potential there. ABX, Barrick Gold, nice, strong, positive divergences off the, this is the PPO up top and the RSI down there. Again, 10-year weekly chart. So uh, we have bullish divergences in place. This is a, you know, resistance levels defined by that reaction low. That comes in around 1360 uh, somewhere around there, 1360 and uh, so far we've had a few failed attempts to get through there, but once we do punch through that level, then the next stop looks to be up here around, and these are ballpark numbers, 1550 or so, and then yeah, I'd expect some consolidation and then ultimately a breakout and a move up there. Um, okay, we'll do one more. There's Newmont, weekly chart, NEM. Here's a downtrend line. Prices broke above that downtrend line, have come back in, and we're close to backtesting that now. There's also a large gap here. If we look here, this is a weekly chart, but we have a gap right where the crosshairs are. Uh, let me get it on, try to get it on the bottom of that gap. There we go. Around 2240-ish, and we're trading right around there right now. So there's gap support as well as this, this downtrend line, which we broke above and we're coming to back test it. So again, there's a potential, uh, you know, long entry on Newmont. If you are bullish on the sector, you can certainly, you know, take a shot here with a long, with a stop below, somewhat 
below the bottom of that gap from the week of uh, January 16th and or below this trend line. The only problem with putting stops below trend lines, sometimes when you when you have a relatively steep downtrend line and you're going long on a back test, prices can continue to creep down, you know, just on the uh, top of that trend line for weeks. So keep that in mind. You may want to have a stop somewhat below the initial tag of that trend line or something like that. Uh, again, you have that gap there to, to use also. One final thing, I just to jump back here to the gold weekly chart, and this will be the last chart, and we'll wrap this up. Uh, something that I did want to bring up was this 40-week uh, moving average. I have this uh, on my gold, the spot gold weekly chart. Again, this is a 40 period, so a 40-week moving average because we're looking at a weekly chart here. And um, as you can see, that's done a pretty good job of defining this uh, secular bull market in gold. We had a secular, uh, I'm sorry, secular, nope, said that wrong, cyclical bear market within the larger secular bull market. And that was back in the financial meltdown. So as you can see here, prices on, on gold went below the 40-week moving average, um, which is also the 200-day moving average. And that um, helped confirm that uh, secular cyclical bear market and then we got back above there and you can just see how well that that moving average has acted as uh, support during uptrends and then once we break below it um, then it's act it will act as resistance from when tested from below so from the bearish case again i told you i was looking at a few bullish and bearish uh, developments uh, one of those is the fact that we continue to trade. We had briefly taken out that 40-week uh, moving average uh, just a couple weeks ago, but only remained above there for a week or so and came back below it. And we need to see prices solidly get above there and trade above there for, for more than just a week or two. If and when that does happen, that will help strengthen the bullish case. But for now, like I said, we're, like I said, we're sort of compressed between a rock and a hard place. Here's uh, support just below us. Uh, we have bullish divergences in place, but on just above us, we had a recent back test of this uh, uptrend line, and we have that 40-week moving average to contend to. So, like I said, best to let let to, let's see how this resolves before aggressively engaging the uh, sector. But uh, if any developments come up on the short-term charts, and I see an opportunity for a quick trade, uh, I'll be sure to post that. All right, this has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed.